The Gospel of the Lord, August 4, 2013, Luke 12, 13, 21. A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. He said to him, My friend, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, Watch and be on your guard against avarice of any kind. For life does not consist in possessions, even when someone has more than he needs. Then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man, who having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, What am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones, and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, My soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul, and this horde of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when someone stores up treasure for himself, instead of becoming rich in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you have had the experience of someone who is close to you, who you love, that passed away, and have the chance to touch him or her when she's dead or he is dead, you will know immediately that even though we still look at his body or her body, once we touch them, we know that he is no longer there. When the soul separates from the body, what remains is just a corpse, a corpse that is cold and hard. And you know immediately, intuitively, that he is no longer alive, that there is something very strange, that he is not there. And what, when you are dead, what will you be able to take from this world? Certainly not, not money, nor possessions, not even the clothes that you are wearing, because they will be destroyed along with your own body. Then what? What is happening here? If we were dead, what would be the purpose of having money? Nothing at all. Yet we know that our soul will not die when we pass from this world. We will present ourselves spiritually before, Lord, before the Lord. And then He will want to see our accounting, to see what happened to us. All the gifts that He gave us, and He is going to want to settle accounts with us. What did we do with His gifts? This person that asked the Lord to sort of judge or become the arbitrator of, the inher of his inheritance is just asking for material things, very much as many of us do when we pray. We ask for things, for material things, whether it be a job, a car, a house, clothes, even the lottery. We do not, we almost never ask the Lord for His Holy Spirit or for His grace, for His forgiveness, for strength to comply and to keep His commands. We rarely do that. We just want things. We covet what we see and what we can grasp with our hands, what we can put in the bank. But our life is so brief, just as a dream. This parable reminds me of that other, where that other rich man who used to have these incredible banquets every day, 
and who had at the entrance of his house a beggar covered with whistles, covered with um, wounds, who only wanted to eat that that fell from the table of the rich man, but nobody gave him anything. And when he passed away, the beggar went into the bosom of Abraham. At the time there was no, no glory opened, but he was close, close to God. And the rich man, who never even knew, or never even cared that there was this beggar, he went into hell. What would we say if we could, if we knew that tomorrow we're going to die? Would it be not a good business for us to take a good part of the, of the money, of the goods that we have, and share to others that have need, so that we might have something good, something rich in the sight of God, so that we might be allowed into heaven? There is a part of the Old Testament where it says, some harvest much, some harvest little. In the end, no one was lacking, and no one had more than he had and he needed. Because every gift, all the harvest that we have, whether they are rich or poor, all are gifts of the Lord. And when He gives us more than we need, He is asking us, He is giving us the opportunity to share with the poorer ones, with our poor brothers. Just as He explains to us in Matthew chapter 25, when He says, Because I hungered and you fed me, because I thirsted and you gave me something to drink, because I was in prison and you visited me. That's what we have to do. And today, the Lord is reminding us, what are we spending our life on? On the troubles and the infatuation of the world that passes away? Or are we building our future in heaven with good deeds? Let us ask let us all ask humbly to the Father Almighty in heaven that He might pour His Holy Spirit in all of us, and especially in each of our brothers that do not have anyone to pray for them, that we might at least be able to share God's love for us and for everyone else, at least in the slightest of ways and that we might walk in this path until we become more like Christ. Of this we ask the Virgin Mary to come along with us and teach us how to be really good, really sons of God. May God bless you all, brothers.